Okay. Um, so again, welcome everyone to this morning's collaboration corner. Today we'll be focusing on a real scenario um, or a real uh, experience that chapters have with establishing pilot committees within their chapters. Um, so really fun topic. But if you haven't attended um, the previous collaboration corner sessions from yesterday, I just want to give a brief overview of what the format is going to look like for today's session. And so today we'll focus on one case study, um, run through it, run the scenario together, and then um, run through some questions as a full group. So walking through like problem solving questions, reflection questions, I'm going to ask for you guys to share about your chapter experiences and how your eboards might be set up or the way your chapter is currently set up. Um, and everything that we share today is in the spirit of collaboration and sharing knowledge with our fellow chapters um, across the United States and Rwanda and really showing that solidarity with each other as you guys enter this academic year. So with that, like I said, today we're going to be talking about establishing pilot committees within chapters. So you may have an eboard structure that's really um, focused on chapter operations. So think campaigns, fundraising, um, the co-president role is obvious, and other roles like communications. Um, but some chapters have um, initiated, you know, directors of advocacy and awareness or outreach or things like that. And so they're not the typical eboard positions, but they come from somewhere. Um, and so we were able to chat with some students about that and what that looks like, but we'll get to dig into chapters who might not have that experience yet through the scenario. Um, before jumping into the written scenario together as a group, does anyone have any questions about the format of the space or um, personal needs to get comfortable? in the space that we have. Okay, cool. I will say that you can get as comfortable as you wish. Um, cameras on or off, mics on or off. You can use the chat as much or as little as you prefer during the space. And I would really encourage everyone to get in that reflective mindset so that uh, when it comes time to answering questions together and walking through that as a group, we can each share what's on our mind. So with that, I'll jump into the scenario. Um, so I'll read it aloud. A chapter has recently been exploring different structures of leadership. They were inspired by their global partners after the summer's virtual grow experience. What they saw in their partner's organizational structure was more horizontal as opposed to hierarchical and everyone's role had held a crucial purpose to their collective work. Rather than delegate many responsibilities to one or two people, every member of the team held a core responsibility. Additionally, students were able to see more collaboration through their partner's work across teams and with the community members involved. The changes this chapter wants to initiate include creating new committees for one, awareness on their local campus and surrounding community, as well as two, sponsorship to seek out financial opportunities for their chapter and partners. So that's our scenario. Um, the questions would not fit on the same slide as this case. So I'm going to bounce between these two slides. Um, but our first question to dig into as a group includes the following. So one, what are some challenges that may arise from starting these new committees. So as a reminder, one is awareness committee and then the other would be the sponsorship committee. And then alternatively, what may be the benefits to these new committees? So I'm going to mute myself, but I need you guys to tell me which slide you need to see at a given time if we wanna bounce back to the scenario. Um, and then of course, if you want to share, feel free to unmute yourself or post in the chat, um, I can read them out loud. Or if you want to maintain anonymity, you can like private message me on Zoom and I will see it and read it anonymously. Um, but with that first question, is anything coming up for folks?
I think um, one of the challenges that might come up is trying to figure out what exactly their responsibilities are going to be because you kind of have to like draft out their exact um, position and responsibilities. And since those are committees that not every place have, there's not really kind of a template that's already able to be used. You have to create it yourself. Um, but I guess the benefit of that would be you'd kind of be able to shape it in whatever way your specific area would benefit most from it because that might alter between chapters how it would best suit um, that particular area. Yeah, actually bouncing off of Brandon. So when you're creating like the new roles, there's a good chance that some of the roles of these new committees might have arisen or some parts of these roles might have been a part of a previous committee and maybe balancing it out to make sure like there's not an overlap on that same role. So kind of strong it out and making sure like everyone has their own set task and it's not clashing with any other committee. Yeah, thank you both for those points. I heard that, you know, with the new committees, there's some flexibility in what can be achieved through it because there's no real guidebook. You get to make up um, the responsibilities based on what's needed and what you're perceiving at the time. And so there's some flexibility and some room with that, but there's also the challenge of, you know, deciding what those needs are, if a whole committee is needed for that. Um, and then, yeah, also hearing that it works to build this consensus around establishing this committee. So not just like making the decision based on the voices of the few, but of the many. And so thank you both for those reflections. Does anyone else have new thoughts, they could be half-baked, they can be fully baked, um, anything goes, but what are some other reflections we're feeling with the scenario? Hey, can I jump in? Yeah, go ahead, Priya. Cool, I just wanted to like um, share a reflection that was coming up from listening to the other responses um, about how, in terms of like making sure that responsibilities or challenges that come with responsibilities that might be overlapping um, arise when only a couple people are included in decision making. And so just the reflection that like as new committees are being formed, as we're trying to create more shared leadership and chapters, there is such a like need for that to be done with the whole chapter involved because even when we don't recognize the ways that one little shift will influence everybody else, it often does. And so um, just the recognition that like, this is a really cool opportunity to practice like truly shared leadership by co-creating the structure with the whole chapter involved, especially for the like nuances of like, what kinds of things go into different roles? Where are we maybe going to like break that mold because our chapter members have certain strengths this year and we wanna like promote them to fully use those strengths. So I don't know, I'm just like noodling. Oh, that's such an old person word, but I am, I'm noodling on, on the like excitement that comes with being able to co-create the shared leadership of the chapter. Yeah, thank you, Priya, for that. I was definitely picking up that sentiment. But yeah, we talked about challenges, benefits. Um, like I mentioned before, I kind of want to hear what your eboard structures or your chapter structure overall looks like. So if someone's comfortable sharing like how their eboard is currently set up and if it's the standard eboard positions, um, that'll that's fine. <laughs> definitely share that. Um, but if you have like a different eboard position that was like born out of a need or a desire from chapter or from a partnership concern, um, that would be cool to share too. Um, but for the most part, what does your eboard structure look like and what does your chapter um, 
operate like as a whole? Um, hi. So I'm not sure if our eboard structure is typical. I think it is. Um, but recently, um, and I'm not sure how this came about either, but I'm the new director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so that's a new position that came about. Um, and obviously there are challenges with creating a new position, but um, because our e-board has approached it so um, collectively, there's a lot of benefits in the sense that I know I can go to other e-board members and that it's more of a group effort than it is an individual one. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that eboard position, diversity, inclusion. Um, there were some other words to it I didn't pick up, but can you share a little bit about what goes into that role? Um, yeah, so as of right now, um, it's still like being thought out, like the exact um, uh, requirements and what um, the committee needs to do and what I need to do. But it's a lot of um, reviewing applications, um, reviewing our GHUs, making sure everything that um, GlobeMed at UW is saying is um, staying anti-colonialist, anti-discriminatory, um, anti-racist. We're also creating resources for club members and people on campus um, for equitable, um, like volunteer options as well as classes that um, either we've taken, um, we being me and the committee or me and eboard, um, classes that have a specific focus on um, anti-racism and anti-discriminatory actions. Um, and yeah, I might have missed something. There's um, a few people uh, from my eboard in the Zoom, um, but I'm not sure how this role came about. Thank you for sharing. That's really cool. I love, 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 love. Like I cannot stress em like enough how much I love hearing that you know different eboard positions get established at different chapters for different reasons. So I had a conversation with a student um, a few days ago, and they mentioned like outreach and sponsorship and uh, awareness and all these different positions. And I was like blown away because when I was in a chapter, like we just had the core function areas. Like we just had the bare minimum e-board, you know, positions filled just to say like we did. Um, and then I was also explaining how like it, it kind of limited the scope of what students could do within a chapter. So for example, like partnership, if you're on the partnerships team, um, you know, it's, it's different than being like a grow team member and doing more hands-on work, but it can also feel like limited if you don't have like a local partnership or something to do all the time. But with different e-board positions, it kind of fills that space and makes sure that everyone's super engaged. So I really like hearing that like this specific position, like even if it's still being like crafted and fine tuned in the current stages right now, but like to know that there's someone who like there's care there, there's investment in that work and it's sustainable. It can go from year to year. Multiple people can hold that position. There could be like a whole committee for it to like cross check and find all the resources that would help the students in your chapter um, with their learning and so like, that's super awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, to add actually a little bit about what Nora was talking about. So uh, right after the eboards transitioned into the new one, someone brought up like a possible need and the idea of, um, or someone brought up a need of having like someone to monitor diversity, equity, inclusion among, and just to ensure like our space was anti-racist and free of any or as free of biases as possible. So the eboard kind of brainstormed possible ideas. And after someone suggested maybe let's have a director, and then later on that came into like an entire committee 
for it. Uh, there was almost like a consensus when we voted and there was no clear cut role, but I think there was a sheet and we like just bullet pointed like a bunch of roles we'd want them to be in charge of. And it kind of was just like a living document that was tweaked and it kind of came about that way. So it wasn't like the most structured way it came about, but the, if we had to boil it down, we identified a need, tried to act upon it and then piece together little bits and pieces and we're kind of still in that process. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Also super cool. I like that consensus building. I think, I don't want to put Priya on the spot, but we've also had some resources come through like staff conversations about consensus building and decision-making. And I really like the idea of that like living document where you all can just like return to it, um, assess at different points of the year and take in multiple perspectives. So um, like whether that lives within eboard or involves the entire chapter, I think that's really interesting to consider too. But yeah, super, super pumped about all of this, all of the structure. Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah, go ahead, Priya. Just like recognizing that from my experience, it's like really um, like it comes with challenges to work in structure, but it's really uncomfortable to work without structure or it can be really uncomfortable to work without clear structure because there's like messiness in it as you figure everything out. I'm just curious, like what has that process felt like for um, those of you who have been involved for the rest of your chapter? Um, who's been involved in the conversations? How are you communicating to people who aren't involved? Like, I'm just, I'm curious, less like what you did and more like, how has it felt to do it in this way? I'm sorry, um, would it be possible to repeat the question? I think um, my connection got a little hazy for a moment, so I didn't really quite catch it. Yeah, the question was just, um, how has it, has it felt to be, going through this process of of co-creation with with maybe some common ideas and common visions but not necessarily clear structure around around this new piece as you figure it out together so how is that process of like creating it without the clear boundaries um how has that felt as students Uh, I guess I think it's felt, well, this is personally just, it feels like it's been pretty fairly um, structured for an unstructured task, if that makes any sense. So I like, I joined the e-board um, just this last year. And so through, like uh, Raul was saying, um, we were creating this position for diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout like the summer and whatnot. And so I guess it's just a lot of uncertainty in what exactly is going to happen or uh, like the, like both um, him and Nora are saying, we're kind of still in that process, but it is still, if anything, exciting to be able to kind of craft these things ourselves because I think it gives us a different perspective than just joining um, kind of a club with a preset structure, but it's something that we can create ourselves, which I just personally think is really cool. I love that. I love that. I like that it's being, it's exciting and it feels generative. And I think that definitely comes from, um, in part from the fact that y'all were responding to like a really clear need, which is exciting because it means that you were paying attention and listening to um, what felt like it was missing and what felt like it was, it was going to serve your chapter in this moment. So that's really great. Thanks. Yeah, um, we can move to the last bullet pointed question on this slide. The last question on this slide asks, what are some potential new ideas to explore this year regarding different group structures? Um, I guess specific for our chapter, um, something that I guess is gonna be interesting and could be super, super helpful is like with the new, um, what is it? Uh, director of like equity, uh, and include diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's kind of like how that plays in with the other committees. Like for example, um, I'm one of the directors of the campaign 
committees and just to like work with someone else to like ensure like one of our fundraisers is uh, to partner with BIPOC businesses in Seattle and just to have someone who is like the role is specifically like for diverse ensuring like diversity, equity and inclusion to have someone like that just run to run certain events by or to run certain GHUs by just to make sure like, okay, this is fine or um, sh or tell us if there's certain changes we could do to ensure like it's as free of bias. That could be um, something that's really helpful. And since the position's kind of just nothing, it's not really set in stone, we can kind of mold it, but it's really nice to have like someone to keep us accountable, although it's not 100% on them. It's just nice to have that like built in into the structure. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, just going back to that position of diversity, equity, and inclusion, like, again, that's just one position, have not heard before, really cool. Um, I think that has the opportunity to be really collaborative as well. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be like kept up to date. Um, I should have prefaced this whole session with that, you know, like, I don't know what happens in chapters at the small level. We only get such few glimpses, you know? So anything you guys share with headquarters, we take it and we celebrate it because we love hearing about it. And so definitely keep us up to date on like how that's going. Um, if you would want to share like stories and reflections with headquarters to like post somewhere on our blog space or something like that, we have a medium post on how to submit those things, but definitely looking forward to hearing more. Um, and then with like other eboard positions, so like campaigns, communications, those kinds of things, to be collaborative with the newer or maybe not so typical eboard positions, also love hearing that. Um, and so like the opportunities that are presented this year, I would love to hear more about. Oh, one of the big takeaways, <clears throat> I think, when reading this was um, about how uh, every member of the team held a core responsibility. And although it's like kind of difficult to implement that, especially in like newer committees, especially because like newer committees are kind of like building themselves as like we go along. Um, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. So it's a little hard to like assign a core responsibility to like each new member, especially when the committee is so new. But just keeping that like kind of on a back burner and just understanding if we're gonna have this new committee, it's gonna function and have a certain role. And to do that, each person needs a specific like position just to make sure like the committee is just not kind of like existing in like dead space. There's a specific like role for it. I feel like making sure that everyone has a responsibility kind of keeps us accountable in that regard. Is there anything else we would be able to suggest to this chapter who wants to start two new committees um, and eboard positions in different areas? So like any, um, yeah, like any ideas for them? Um, I'm a big fan of just check-ins in general. So uh, if you like having like maybe co-presidents check in with like the newly appointed directors of these or checking in with the committee members to kind of see what exactly role they're caring about and kind of looking in at these check-ins to see, okay, are we spread, is this person spread a little too thin? Are they trying to do too much? Or are we, do we have too many people in this committee? Is there not enough work to do? Or just other things like, is this, just flat out just working or not working. So just if something's new, just paying a little bit of extra attention to it, just to make sure everything's running smoothly. And if not, what can we tweak to improve? Yeah, going off of that, I think um, 
the people who are in charge of these new committees um, need to be responsible enough to go to eboard when they need help, as well as eboard come to them when they can offer help in certain areas. Because um, awareness is a super collaborative um, a position as well as sponsorship. And I think because the eboard is making the effort to be um, a more um, equal eboard and more um, and delegate more, then I think they just need to like follow through with that and make sure everyone's needs are being reached. Okay. Well, that was really helpful. And I'm sure that the receiving chapter, like the chapter that's going to be receiving all of your good advice, um, will be excited to one, hear it, and then try all these new things as they start up. These new two, two new committees, words are getting to me. Um, but yeah, we tackled all of our questions. Um, you guys shared some really awesome things, very in-depth reflections with all of us in the room today. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining this space. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week.